this over to Nancy Tomes, who's one of the faculty members who uh, created the uh, Pandemic Narratives Initiative. So Nancy, go ahead. Okay, hello, welcome to everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today and to welcome my, uh, my panel of distinguished, uh, whoops, nope, is it? Oh, oh they are waving at me. Uh, you can hear me, yes? Yeah, good, okay. Um, so uh, as Adrian um, suggested, this is part of what we're calling the Pandemic Narratives Initiative. Um, this is a collective of faculty, students, and staff as well, um, who are uh, wanting to reflect on the pandemic and what it's, what it's done to us uh, over the past, uh, now over a year and a half. So one of our goals when um, the faculty first came around with this idea was to encourage creative ways of uh, thinking and sharing uh, our experiences. And when we first started blue skying about what we wanted the Pandemic Narratives Project to be about, that, that piece of uh, trying to be creative, uh, to think about uh, graphic novels, cartooning, um, art exhibits. Um, and inevitably, um, we started thinking about podcasting. Um, I think many of us, we were just chatting here about having that year or, or more of lockdown uh, stimulated an interest in different ways of connecting with the world. Um, and podcasts, I think, became more of a thing with uh, a lot of us. I experienced podcasts as a content, um, as, as part of the contact. Uh, content being uh, interviewed for shows like Radio Lab, which, um, you know, on any given day, many more people are going to hear me than ever, you know, uh, a classroom or anything I write. Um, so when we started talking about podcasting, we quickly discovered that, as is so true in many ways, that our students were way out in front of us. Um, that they had discovered podcasting and had uh, developed skills at podcasting, at interviewing, um, at exploiting these, these ways of connecting, um, and have been doing some really interesting uh, things with them. So today's event was uh, organized to share with the rest of you some of the treasures that we discovered um, here at um, Stony Brook. Um, there is a subgroup of the pandemic narratives that uh, we call the student engagement team, and I'd like to call them out. Uh, Isabel Brahaney Schaefer, Irene Virag, Norm Bruslin, Kathy Marone, who's here, and Lisa Diedrich has also been very helpful. Um, they really um, brought these terrific people to our attention. So we're going to have two presentations um, today. Um, and I've uh, asked the, um, the presenters to share for about 15 minutes and then we'll, we'll have time for uh, Q&A. Um, if I could ask you to use the chat box uh, to start giving us questions as we go along and then we can uh, uh, use those when we get to the Q&A um, <coughs> period. So with no further ado, I will um, uh, introduce our first presenter, Melanie Formosa, who is a uh, sophomore? Junior. Now she's a junior. <laughs> OK, so she started this as a sophomore right? um, uh, in uh, a journalism major at Stony Brook and is the producer of Tuesdays with Melanie, the comeback podcast and she has worked a lot with WUSB, yes, our, mm -hmm. our campus radio station. So um, Melanie will get the first um, presentation. Maybe I'll go ahead and introduce our, our second set of presenters um, and then get off the screen. Um, we are also very fortunate to have two of the collective team from Queer Diagnosis, the LGBTQ plus uh, health podcast, uh, to talk about the, the um, 
the extraordinary work that they've been doing. So we will hear from Jameson Coleman, who is a junior, senior, senior, senior in physics and astronomy. He's the editor of Queer Diagnosis. And Zaria Sheikh, am I saying that right? Yeah. Um, who is a double uh, major in biochemistry and women, gender, and sexuality studies. And she is the creator of uh, Queer Diagnosis. So without further ado, uh, I'll hand it over to Melanie and uh, We'll get started. You guys want to move closer? Presentations from behind here. If you want to be able to see that. Yeah. Hi, Maria. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm honored to be here. I've um, created a little presentation, so I'm going to be showing that. And my goal is to um, inspire anyone and everyone who wants to create their own podcast to do so. Can everyone see the screen? Yes. Excellent. All right. Does anybody know what this picture is? Okay, I'm seeing no, I'm seeing shaking heads. This picture, is blurry, right? It's blurry, she's truncated, you can't see her head. The L in Levi's is cut off. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, there's a little bit of, of rule of thirds, maybe it's kind of framed nicely, but it's not the best quality. Would it surprise you that this person has 10.9 million subscribers on YouTube? <laughs> That picture was from her first video in 2017. This is Emma Chamberlain, if anybody knows. Does anybody know who Emma Chamberlain is? Okay. She, I chose her because she is our age, 20, and she has 10.9 million subscribers. She also has her own podcast right now. I bring this up because that picture is from her first video and now she has that many subscribers. So I saw this, this post and I, want, I took a screenshot because it's so valuable. Your first workout will be bad. Your first podcast will be bad. Your first speech will be bad. Your first anything will be bad, but you can't make your hundredth without making your first. It's really important to just put all of that aside and begin if you want to podcast. So I want to kind of, this exercise is, is looking through the lens of Emma and using her to then incorporate that into podcasting. So Urban Dictionary writes her as the girl that can't get enough coffee. She apply, applies is spelled wrong, but I'll go forward. <laughs> <laughs> applies chapstick, vlogs in her car, you know, great person in general, right? So she has this personality, and that is why people keep coming back to view Emma Chamberlain's videos, because whether she's in her car going through a Trader Joe's haul in her, you know, putting things in her fridge, whatever it may be, people want to see Emma. So she has this personality that is almost addictive to her subscribers. She also is very consistent. As you can see on the bottom, this was um, in her description box on YouTube for the majority of her first videos. Thanks for stopping by, I plan on uploading at least one time per week, so subscribe. So subscribers had this thing to turn to, oh, Emma's gonna subscribe at least once a week. So she has this consistency. And I want you to just look at the picture on the left for a minute. <laughs> this girl has almost 11 million subscribers. And this is from a video that she created in 2019. Now I'm not saying to start creating podcasts and videos that you know, show this or you know, you're in a hoodie or whatever. But I just want you to understand that you can begin anytime and you don't have to be perfect. 
and it's yeah that that's not framed well <laughs> the lighting is off so let's get a little bit about me i am a junior even though it says 22 i might be graduating early that's why it says that but I'm a news director at WUSB, or the news director. I'm a lead copy editor at the press. Um, I'm interning as a copy editor off campus at a, at a newspaper. Um, I'm the secretary of Society of Professional Journalists, member of the advisory board of my School of Communication and Journalism, and I also work in the television studio. So I started podcasting during the pandemic, actually. It was fall 2020 is when I first began. And that time gave me the opportunity to decide that, oh, I actually do like podcasts. And Emma, I brought up Emma because, as I said, she's our age or college students' age. So kind of gives some, some context. But she went viral and she, she is not, she's kind of just like us. She's just a human being. But she had personality, she had consistency. So if you are thinking of podcasting, keep that in mind that you don't have to be perfect, but just begin. And if you have something that people are gonna wanna watch, then that's, that's all that matters and you can go up. I'm not saying you're gonna be viral, but you're gonna go up. The podcast that I produced was called The Comeback. Tuesdays with Melanie, the comeback. It is kind of a takeoff of Tuesdays with Maury. Um, and that was just because I wanted it to be more of a nonchalant, casual conversation, but covering important issues. The first podcast I started was Grit 2020. And that was during the pandemic, get right in touch is what it stood for. And it was really just to persevere through the pandemic. Um, that was fall 2020. Then I, was asked to work in the TV studio for Dini Disk and Zimmerman, if any of you know her. She's fabulous, a great resource here. And she asked me to work for her and be her assistant. So in January of 2021, I interviewed Juliana Richardson of the History Makers, who was an absolutely incredible woman and person and resource. Um, and if you don't know her, definitely check her out. She has collected an incredible archive of Black history. Um, I interviewed her for Black History Month here at Stony Brook, and that kind of put the bug in me that I really, really, really like podcasts, and I love interviewing, I love being on camera, and just understanding people's minds and getting them to open up. So this, this, um, this podcast that I did is of St uh, Stony Brook University President Maureen McKinnis, and I, I interviewed her for my last podcast in August. Um, if you are thinking of podcasting, definitely, definitely decide what you want to do. So just focus in on, I want to highlight, for example, what I did. Coming back after all this time remotely, we're coming back to campus in person. How are we going to manage that? What are we going to do? Everything's different. I'll be wearing a mask can't see people's faces, totally different social distancing. So I decided to talk to notable people on campus, Judy Brown Clark, President McInnes, Dean of Students Rick Rateau, Rick McClendon, or Rick Rateau is Student Affairs Dean uh, Rick McClendon, and a lot of other people, just to kind of gain their insights on coming back. So, Sorry about that. I'm going to just play my intro so you can see. Hang on one second. Okay, ready? Thank you for tuning in to the Comeback Podcast. Allow me to introduce our esteemed cultural historian and president of Stony Brook University, Dr. Maury McInnes. Dr. McInnes is our sixth president and came to us from the University of Texas in Austin. 
She has served in pretty much every academic role from professor of art history to vice provost at the University of Virginia to provost and executive vice president or vice provost at University of Texas, Austin, making her eminently qualified to run this A1 research university. Okay, so that's just my intro. Were you able to find it? No. Okay, great. Then I, I want you to just see here. That was my intro. We keep talking. Of following the important guidelines of always being masked and staying physically distant from one another. And we can do to help prepare students for that kind of future, for this very interconnected world. So I'm showing bits and pieces because I want you to see, we're kind of, I ask questions, she answers, I bounce off. It's more of a conversation rather than an interview. And that's what I wanted my podcast to be. So if you are interested in podcasting, figure out what exactly you want to achieve for your listeners. Afterwards, um, then she starts talking with her hands, right? And we kind of get more in depth. And as it goes on, this is 29 minutes long, you can see almost that, and you can hear if you listen, that we kind of get more comfortable and more at ease. And that's what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to open my source up and talk about, about what's going on on campus and, and in, in society. Afterwards, I ask her about a fun fact. And if you're interested, you can go to my channel and watch this. And she, she shares a fun fact about herself. But the goal here is, um, is to really just dive in. And, and get what you want to get out of your source. So if you're interested in podcasting, and I, I'm hoping that there are some students here, or maybe the students will watch this. This is directed towards students. There are so many podcast outlets here on campus, so many. WUSB, The Statesman, the ECC building where I work, the School of Communication and Journalism, WSHU, SBU TV, so many resources. In the Loop podcast is by the Statesman and you can get involved as a student. Um, they are looking actively looking for people to get involved with that. I also have Higher Ground here, which is a WSHU uh, radio show by JD Allen, who's um, a professor at the School of Communication and Journalism. And I, I, I would recommend listening to podcasts and making sure, you know, what you want to achieve and, and that would help, help kind of create what you want. So I'm going to end this presentation with some things that I wish I knew and things that I've learned along the way. And again, this is directed at students, but also just people in general who want to podcast. And this is apl applicable to anything. You're not as bad as you think you are when you begin. And even if you are, you will improve. If you go to my YouTube channel, you will see my first video. You will see. <laughs> I don't have to say any more. But you will improve. Also, this is very time consuming. I've spent hours, hours, like all-nighters times you know, 30, really. You're, but you're building your brand, you're putting your face out there. So you're, you're gonna have to spend time and that leads into social media is your friend. It is basically free advertising. It is a virtual resume and make professional accounts. I have been avoiding social media like the plague uh, because of its toxicity, but it's really very important if you want to get an audience. Also, don't be boring. I'm trying to make this presentation not boring, and I hope I'm achieving that. But you really just, you need to understand that what would you listen to? Because you are like everybody, and they're not going to want to just sit there, and it's not happening. Make it interesting. I have 14 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And no, I am not embarrassed. Well, a little bit, maybe. But, but don't be embarrassed. Really don't be embarrassed because you're doing this for yourself. Everybody starts out at zero. Look at Emma. In 2017, she had zero subscribers. Now she has almost 11 million. Know what you want to focus on if you are going to create a podcast. Make it streamlined. Don't be like all over the place. 
And once you know, once you know, then start reaching out and write emails professionally to the people that you want to get. I got the president of Stony Brook University on my podcast. How did I do that? By reaching out professionally. So don't, nobody is too big to reach out to. They can just not respond. Reach out anyway. Also get a good profile shot um, and have it uniform across all platforms. It's really, really valuable because people are gonna see, oh, that's her, oh, that's him. Professors and mentors are here to help you. It's their job, that's what they get paid for. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. And finally, people are always watching. I, I learned this years ago, someone told me. People are always watching you, not only on social media, but just in general. So if you are interested and genuinely wanting to be ambitious, they will, they will follow, they will help you be ambitious. Opportunities will come and doors will open. So please, if you're interested in podcasting, reach out to me. I have a lot of resources. Um, also, a lot of students don't know that the ECC building here at Stony Brook University is open to them. They have several studios, two studios, and then a podcast studio. Incredible resource. So definitely look into that. Connect with me on social media. Make my 14 subscribers increase. <laughs> and look into WUSB, the Statesman, um, the School of Communication and Journalism, whether you're a major or a minor. Doesn't really matter. Um, they will help you anyway, and SBU TV, WSHU. But I just want to end this with podcasting during the pandemic was so almost easy for me because I was able to dedicate time, which I didn't have before. Um, and this is, this is the time to start, really. I mean, the present moment is, is when. So, oh, I've been wanting to start a podcast. Just do it. And it could be blurry. <laughs> I mean, be, you know, of course, make yourself presentable, but, but never think, oh, I'm not good enough. Just do it. Get your name out there and enjoy the process. So I look forward to seeing you on social media and thank you again. If you can let me try just let me to the chat, uh, see if there are any questions. Um, so what, what I think we ought to do is take maybe five minutes of questions specifically on uh, Melanie's uh, presentation. Um, and then we can, we'll also have some time at the end for general discussions. Okay, what's your process for preparing questions for guests? Good question. Excellent question. Chris, I, I know you, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. I, it helps that I'm a journalism major mm -hmm. and I love writing. Yes. <laughs> um, and also I'm a copy editor and fact checker. So that all works in, in the process. But my process is actually kind of strange. Um, <laughs> I don't really have a list of questions. I do a ton of research on the person beforehand, learn about them, and then kind of just have um, almost phrases of, oh, I want to I want to get that. But I, I personally um, wouldn't suggest creating questions for, for person, you know, for my, for my podcast, because I wanted it to be more of a conversation. Mm -hmm. I didn't want an interview. That was not my goal. Mm -hmm. So if I had questions, it would just disrupt the flow. Mm -hmm. um, so I had things that I wanted to talk about. And then depending on where the conversation would lead, I would go into that, but, but always be an expert first on the person mm -hmm. and then just let it, let it flow. Thank you, Chris. That's interesting. So, um, because I think a lot of us, our first impulse is to think that you've got to do these very elaborate questions, but you're saying topics, maybe more. This is a topic I'd like to discuss with this person. Okay, for you, what are the advantages and disadvantages of podcasting? 
versus TikTok versus video? Good question. Very, very good question. The advantages of podcasting um, are really that they're here at Stony Brook for me. I have access to the podcast studio. So audio is great. I, I sort of, I didn't have access to video. I was using my phone, which wasn't great, but had to put it out there um, and distribute and video was always nice. But then I got access to a camera. So TikTok, um, I'm not, I, I'm not really that big of a fan of TikTok mm -hmm. just because um, I want to go into deep topics and TikTok for me, it's just not the best outlet because it's more quick and like, you know, podcasting allows to really delve into, into what you want to talk about. Video blogging, again, I want to be more professional. That's my goal. Um, and I believe that podcasts offer that instead of just video blogging or, or TikTok. I hope that answers your question, Adrian. Okay, any other questions for Melanie? I, I was typing one, but I, I wasn't going to get it in there fast enough, so I'll just ask. Oh, you go, guy. <laughs> Enjoyed that. Um, I'll just read what I was typing and then continue in my own words. I'm a Luddite and in general inexperienced with all things pertaining to social media. I imagine my interest in obscure music from the 70s would attract few followers. <laughs> my, my question is, is what is important in getting all those followers? And I'm thinking also about our theme of pandemic narratives. Is it the topic or is that sort of irrelevant? Is it some something else that's ineffable? I mean, I, I, I'm asking about the sort of the trajectory of this uh, hazy photo you showed at the beginning I, I i still don't understand how that person got all those followers at all mm -hmm. it, it completely mystifies me so what i'm really asking is how do we get all those followers <laughs> what tricks do we need what what do we need to do to have well i'll settle for one million <laughs> following us with pandemic Andrew, great 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 question it also mystifies me i'll be honest <laughs> with you <laughs> um Personally, I think it's in the editing because we're as humans interested in being caught, like almost a hook. And Emma, if you watch some of her videos, she's very like jumpy, you know, all kind of all over the place in her edits and it entices the viewer. As far as the hazy picture, I think it has to do with luck, a lot of it, which I know that's the easy way out. Um, but Sometimes things just happen <laughs> and I don't know how they get so many followers. For instance, with you though, um, 70s music, that sounds interesting. <laughs> I would just, I would, I personally would focus on the editing. And as I go forward in my podcast, I'm gonna delve into the editing, not just having like one shot of just sitting there talking, but instead different angles, right? Zoomed in, zoomed out. I did that backwards, but you get the picture. Capturing, capturing the audience so they want to know more. That's that's basically that's basically it. Not being boring. That's yes. If, if you just focus your whole thing on not being boring, you will get followers. <laughs> I hope that answers a little bit of your question. It, it answers my question, but it 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 certainly doesn't give me much hope for me individually but maybe our group. Uh, <laughs> um, we have a, a bunch of questions here. I'm gonna pick one more and then we'll move on. Um, but if somebody can make sure that we preserve the, uh, the questions in the chat, that would be great. And uh, I will answer them. Yes, oh, you're, you're terrific. Um, so I wanted to pick this one about someone who's asking about advice for somebody who may have very limited resources, especially for equipment, uh, time, uh, et cetera. Yes, I would, I would say then don't, don't put it out once a week, maybe once a month. Podcast can be, you know, whatever you want it to be. Um, as far as equipment, your phone is, is fine. I, I did a lot of podcast videos on my phone. I was using audio equipment, but, but you can use your phone. If you have an iPhone, great. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, time. I don't know what to say about the time. It takes time. I'm sorry. <laughs> it 
<laughs> it does take time. Um, but I guess just time management and, and making sure it fits into your schedule and, and you can do, you know, monthly, whatever, monthly listens with Adrian, right? So do it once a month or once every two months, you can make what you want of it. Great, thank you so much. Um, and again, we'll, we'll save the questions that didn't get answered, but now I'd like to turn it over to our uh, second uh, set of presenters. Uh, Azaria and Jameson. Hello. Hello. How is everyone today? Doing well? Okay, great. We learned a lot about using reactions like this and goodbye <laughs> during the Zoom time. Um, so hi, my name is Zaria Sheikh. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm a senior at Stony Brook. My name is Jameson Coleman. My pronouns are he and his. I'm also a senior at Stony Brook. And I do want to give a shout out to our co-host, um, who is currently a graduate student over at Columbia. She couldn't be with us today because of the commute, um, but she is with us. As well as I want to give a big shout out to our interns who actually, um, we started an internship through the Women's Gender Studies Department through, thanks to um, the Pandemic Narratives Initiative. So a big shout out to our team over there. They're doing a great job. Um, so we don't have as formal of a presentation. And first of all, I just want to say um, a really cool thing about the pandemic is I think it actually brought people closer because Melanie and I actually know each other from our Spanish course. And I had no idea that she was working on a, on a podcast at the same time that we were. So it's amazing how worlds collide even online. Um, so with that said, uh, we can go through our first question. Um, so the way that we got interested in podcasting is that in my sophomore year, um, my roommate, Shrita, who's now my co-host, she listened to a lot of podcasts and she always said, oh, you know, we drone on and on for four hours at a time after we study. We definitely have things to talk about, but we can never really come up with an idea for what a podcast could. I, I've never, I had never really listened to a podcast before. Um, so I was a bit opposed to the idea because also I, I didn't know how it would work. I didn't, we also are um, working students. It's hard to find the time, which relates to a question that was asked earlier. Um, but I think one of the main inspirations for the podcast came from, I think my journey with sexuality. So just to elaborate on that. Um, so I identify as queer within the community and I also work in healthcare. So I started working in healthcare first as a medical scribe, then as an EMT. And now I'm trying to start um, like a volunteer clinic. I'm trying to figure out the resources for that at this time. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've been in healthcare for a long time and working as a medical scribe, I learned that a lot of times when a patient comes in, they, they state their sexuality, the doctor immediately focuses on their sexuality rather than the uh, ailment that they came in with. Um, it's, called mis it's called broken shoulder syndrome. So basically what happens is that if a patient comes in and they say, hey, my shoulder's not working that well, but then the patient also mentions that they're gay, lesbian, so on and so forth. Um, instead of focusing on the shoulder, the doctor instead focuses on, on their sexuality rather than focusing on the physical um, aspect. So seeing this as a medical scribe, I did not really, I didn't really have much of a say in terms of how we would talk to the patient. Because for instance, another thing that a doctor would automatically ask was, oh, so are you here for STD testing? And that was an assumption that was automatically made based off uh, gender sexuality. So that's something that I saw and I figured, oh, well, I feel like this is due in part to the lack of visibility for the queer community in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So it was in December of 2020. So right before, <laughs> at the beginning of this year, almost. Um, I personally, I, I don't know any, I did not have many queer friends growing up. And I also did not know any queer providers, whether that was um, doctors, medical students, anything. So I was looking at myself and I was like, okay, well, I want to become a doctor someday. I'm Muslim and I'm queer. Do I know anybody who fits those three criteria? Do I know, do I have any representation in this? And so I Googled, I Googled first LGBTQ plus physician. A few things popped up. Then I Googled Muslim LGBTQ plus mm -hmm. physician automatically we went from 100,000 results down to one. It was crazy how quickly it changed. 
And so I decided to change it up a little. So I said, Pakistani Muslim physician. Some things came up. As soon as I put the word queer back in there, we were back to, it said no results popped up. So I was devastated, you know, for someone like, I had spent so much time in healthcare and I was coming to terms with my own sexuality, which I hadn't really shared with anybody before. Um, and I think that was due in part to the fact that I had no representation. So it was actually kind of funny because, you know, I'm out here having a mental breakdown and I text Jameson. I'm like, hey, Jameson, you know, I Google. So there was another article that came up that was, um, it, it was from a physician that was working in Brooklyn and he had interviewed other physicians and he asked them about what it was like to be out in medicine. Mm -hmm. And the physicians that he like interviewed they experienced, they experienced higher rates of depression, whether they were out of medicine or not, um, mostly because of the reaction of their colleagues to um, just to who they, just to their identity by itself. Even if it never came up in conversation, they could feel that there was some sort of a disconnect. Um, so that really, I think it kind of scarred me. And actually what Melanie was talking about in terms of emailing and just reaching out to people, for me, email is my best friend. I love to email. It's my go-to. So what I was going to do is I was going to email the physician who wrote the article and say, hey, can I talk to you about this? And then as I was, I was FaceTiming Jameson at the same time, actually, at, at this point. Um, and I realized, hey, maybe this is something that other people are struggling with. And that inspired me to, you know, get Shita, my co-host on the line. And I was like, hey, guys, what, what do we think of maybe recording my conversation with this physician that I'd like to meet? And then from there, we had this idea for, I had so many questions, not one person could answer it. Also, the physician who I contacted was a white male. And that by, it's, I think it's better to have as much representation from different backgrounds as possible. Um, because not everyone has the same perspective. And I think that's important that that's acknowledged. So from there, we decided to, you know, start a podcast. And a lot of it was just me. I, I mean, I've never met somebody who had um, started a podcast or anything like that. I mean, I do have a little sister who's on TikTok all day, um, but that's very different from podcasting. So within the span of a month, I think we had put out our first episode. And like, again, thanks to Jameson was a really big part of that in terms of editing and shoot those as well. Um, so it's actually really interesting because for me, I was examining, um, I was examining being queer in a healthcare setting. But Jameson's not part of the queer, uh, oh, sorry, is not part of the healthcare setting. Neither is Shrita. Shrita is part of economics. The question is, how does this, like, why is this something of interest to them? And so I'll let Jameson answer why that might be something that he got part of. Well, like she was saying, one day she kind of just, uh, I'm actually looking for the exact text right now. <laughs> just kind of out of the blue, she just texted me about um, if I knew anybody that could edit a podcast <laughs> just kind of out of the blue it's like hey you know anybody that can edit a podcast and I was like I mean I can try <laughs> and then pretty much the rest of the story is kind of just how she told it um we kind of just got started on building the brand where like we we focused in on what issues we wanted to make sure were addressed and yeah it's like it, it was also like an idea that resonated with me as well so I figured it would be a good thing and a good way to give back to the community. And um, so, yeah, we, we started on branding. We started making logos and a website and whatnot. And yeah, kind of just got the ball rolling. Yeah, and I do want to say that the, we're actually wearing our merchandise right now. And we actually, we also have our tote bag. And I do want to give Jameson a big shout out to that for that because Jameson created the merchandise. Um, so entirely, you know. And then my been, computer broke. And his computer broke about two weeks ago, which is a whole other problem. And we lost a lot of data, but that's part of living in an online world. Um, so I think we have another question to answer. And that was, um, what skills did you have to learn it? Um, so when I was in a, when I was in sixth grade, I started tutoring my classmates. And you're wondering, I'm sure, what does tutoring have to do with a podcast, right? Um, but I had started tutoring some of my classmates and, you know, a lot of, my classmates started coming to my house where it became half the class from fifth grade was in my house. And we lived in a very small house at the time. And uh, my mom was like, we gotta take these kids somewhere else. Like we physically cannot have this many like students here. Um, so from that, my dad actually decided to start a tutoring center. 
Um, and I actually became one of the first tutors, quote unquote, just because a lot of my students, uh, a lot of my peers had asked me to tutor. So over the past, the, the tutoring center started in 2011. So it's been 10 years. And um, I've been a really big part of um, the academy. That's what we call it. So I started, you know, I was a hiring manager for a long time. I centralized our whole um, worksheet system. We tutor students K through 12. Um, and so, and yeah, hopefully the MCAT, depending on my success with that. Um, but, you know, I learned how to create flyers. I learned how to talk to people. But actually, I think that experience of talking to people came much earlier on. So just for context, um, when I was, you know, eight years old, my dad would turn around in Costco and he would talk to every single person live. And I was horrified because I was like, I'm wearing my pajamas. I'm just here to get strawberries. And I like, I was really only in, I only really came in the car because I needed to be the third person for the carpooling, you know? So I was devastated, you know, at 8 a.m. in a Costco. Um, but actually I picked up that habit of, you know, just randomly like talking to people and, you know, getting to know them and I think that the a lot of the interpersonal skills came from seeing my parents talk to different people and um just starting to you know get to know my professors a little bit better in office hours uh and yeah that, that was something that really helped me personally I think with editing. Pardon? Oh, editing skills oh yeah um so like I said, I kind of come from a background of video editing where that's kind of where my strong suits are. And so when I was asked if I could do audio editing, I figured, hey, it can't be that different. And so our first episode, I edited it entirely in my video editing software because that's what I knew. And I didn't realize that when I exported it, it would also be exporting the video, which would be, it was about an hour and a half. And so it took about two days of rendering to get the audio exported <laughs> and there were mistakes in it. <laughs> and so um, it, it kind of involved a lot of learning new software, learning how to edit the audio so that it sounds better than just the raw audio from a microphone, getting it pieced together, learning how to use Zoom to get the guests audio. Because for our first one, we had all of the audio on the same channel and sometimes it would overlap and it didn't sound very good which is unfortunate but we had to learn and so i've definitely picked up a lot of skills around uh, podcasting and organizational skills i had to get a lot better with time management in order to get episodes out on time actually yeah i, I do actually want to comment on time management because i'm not going to lie to you um sometimes i would be posted so we, we originally set officially we post the episodes on bi-weekly on Wednesdays at 5 a.m. And that sounded realistic to me because, you know, I can hear the video. Um, but we would be we would be up at 8, 8 p.m. the fall the previous night thinking, huh, well, we still have to, you know, create the fire. We have to, um, you know, cue this. We need to come up with the cover art. There were so many steps that um, it was a little bit overwhelming at the beginning when we started in January. But I think now, especially with um, the interns that we have, and they're wonderful, really, I think that they've, they're taking the podcast to a whole other level and I'm really excited for season two just because it's also like just to explain something about um our interns they're really hard working and they're really passionate about what they're doing I mean I've never I've never met a I, I mean I I've you know I've hired for a tutoring center I've, I've interviewed a lot of people but um I'm actually really grateful to have interns who care about what they do and they're willing to learn and I always unfortunately I'm very nitpicky and I have a lot of feedback um and they're they're always ready for it and they're always willing to give me feedback as well because I'm not perfect none of us are perfect we don't necessarily know how to running a tu running a tutoring center is very different from podcasting and so I'm learning how to you know delegate and be more comfortable with not always checking every single detail because they know what they're doing yeah so um yeah that actually relates to personal growth as well um, I can also speak to just um, my own sexuality, if everyone is comfortable. <laughs> um, so before the podcast, I had never really, I, I had only told two people about my identity. And um, to be able to talk about it on a platform like this mm -hmm. in a way that matters to me, I mean, my sexuality, of course, always matters to me, but 
to relate it back to healthcare, which is something that I really care about, um, I think is really important because a lot of people, um, it's not something that we really talk about. For instance, um, how many people here know what the term affirmative care means? Thank you, Jameson. <laughs> so affirmative care means that you're being affirmed every part of the of your medical journey. So what that means is from the minute that you enter the, let's say you're in an urgent care, from the minute that you enter the, the waiting room, somebody asks me, hi, what are your names and what are your pronouns? Because a lot of times we automatically, and this is something that just happens, we form a general impression. Because we're like, okay, well, based on what I know, this person is male, this person is female, but you don't necessarily know how that person identifies. That's something that you have to ask. That's not something that you can just assume. Um, and also, so like even with medical forms, as you're focusing on, um, as you're focusing on uh, filling out a form, for instance, it might ask you, are you married or single, and what is your relationship status? Some people don't necessarily identify as uh, single, but they don't identify as married either, and it does not always give you that other form. Um, another thing is, uh, this is something that I've actually been trying to shift towards myself. Um, one of the three top options for like your title is doctor, mister, and missus, or miss. And so one thing is that sometimes you look at somebody's name in a sign email signature, and you're not sure whether what the gender of that person is. So you take a guess, but instead of doing that, you can write MX, dear MX Coleman, instead of assuming that person's gender and open that space for them to tell you what their gender is or how they prefer to be um, addressed. I think that was our timer. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, great. That's the warning bell. Yeah. Oh, we answer questions after our time is wrapped up? Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, to choose what you think is going to be the best yeah. to answer. Oh, I think for advice to give to other students who might be thinking about this, I think one of the things is just kind of get your feet in the water. You don't have to have all the materials. You don't have to have, you know, a lifetime of experience to do this. Um, honestly, I looked at WikiHow and I just kind of started like looking at, okay, it says to get a microphone. What is the cheapest possible microphone that I could get on Amazon? <laughs> then and that's true. You can listen to our, you know, first senior. You'll definitely yeah. tell that's the cheapest microphone around. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I think it's just a matter of don't doubt yourself. Oh, this is something else that actually like in our first round of feedback, and this is a question that I see as well. Um, I used, I think as a female, um, oftentimes we're, you know, kind of programmed to, you know, be careful, step on, step on, um, I think it's the term is step on eggshells almost when we speak mm -hmm. to others. So for instance, like as an interviewer, um, what I do is I always send the questions to our guests beforehand. So they know, they know what the questions are going to be and they tell me if they're uncomfortable. But sometimes within a recording, I'll say, if you're comfortable, could you please? And there's nothing wrong with that. But there is a certain confidence that comes with interviewing somebody knowing that, yes, this person has already agreed to it. You don't necessarily have to undersell yourself in order to ask that question that was already um, agreed upon. So, yes, thank you. Great, thank you. Let's see what like, uh, questions we've got. To... There's actually, there's two questions that I've seen already uh, that I, I wanted to address. So one of them was from Adrian, which asks, Basically, what I'm addressing is, have you seen more podcast blogs, et cetera, in the same vein? And the other one is from Liz asking about our naming process. Mm -hmm. And there's a very <laughs> funny story about that. So we had decided on the name. We had created all the social media accounts. And we had recorded the first episode. We had made the logo. And it was the night before we were about to publish, right? When we went on Instagram. <laughs> And we looked up the name of our podcast and we found a podcast, or we found not a podcast, but a, a, an account called Diagnosis Queer. <laughs> and so we looked at that and we were like, oh no. <laughs> we're and not we're like, lawyers. <laughs> right, yeah, we're not lawyers. We don't see have a lawsuit coming. <laughs> yeah. And so we looked through it and they were doing something very similar to us, but it wasn't a podcast. They would interview uh, sort of queer physicians and people in the medical space. And then they would take snippets of those interviews and sort of do like a highlight on the person that they're focusing on. So they would do a post on like, like, oh, this one person in the medical space. And then they would give a couple of quotes from them and outline like their career history and whatnot. But it wasn't a podcast. And at one point we reached out to them 
and like we, we sent them a message and we're like, hey, <laughs> we didn't mean to do this, we're sorry. <laughs> but they never responded. <laughs> so, and yeah, we, we, we purchased the donate, domain name okay. for the website. Yeah. So now we're illegal. I hope we'll find out if we get a lawsuit, we'll keep you updated. <laughs> but the naming process was also a lot of trial and error. Like yeah. we came up with like a bunch of different ones. Yeah. What, what we was like that also ran? Hmm? What what's one that you thought of and there were oh, ditched? I remember. There's a book called What Color Is Your Parachute? Sure. So I had gotten that book and I was like, well, what color is your stethoscope? Yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah, a little yeah. play on that. Yeah. Um, but I see that I see that Karen is smiling. I I hope that's a smile, and I'm glad that we didn't do that. No, I think you did. <laughs> yeah. Um, we definitely had, I don't know what the other ones were actually. So she sent me a text message Wednesday, December 30th at 10 11 p.m. Just like right in when I'm about to go to bed. And you said, Queer diagnosis, what color is your stethoscope? Rainbow stethoscope, queer's anatomy. Take your pick. <laughs> I think that was my suggestion. Was that what I that was that was mine. No, <laughs> and so um we went through like we ran that we ran like the options by like seven different people. We did, and yeah. We decided on queer diagnosis, and that happened to be the one that was the reverse right. of the other oh, one. God, it was just by chance too. We I mean, because originally, like I said, I had Googled all these um I Googled like LGBTQ plus, like okay. all these inquiries, nothing came up. So I'm surprised that once we were established and they, the funny thing is they actually started at the same time that we did more or less. It was only, yeah, like, it was, it was only a gap more. of a month, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, it started like around November and yeah, yeah. we were still like fine right December. They met students maybe and that's why they, if you don't hear from them because now they're you know, um, in their third year or whatever. Oh, I'm not, I mean, they're, those, they're pretty active. Yeah, they are very active. I'm not sure. We did reach out. Um, <laughs> Interesting. I'm not sure why they didn't mm -hmm. respond, but I'm assuming it's just because um, they're not. I, I can't. Think of that we we <laughs> sat down and we made the logo in one night. <laughs> we just bounced off like ideas for on one another. We just sat down on my computer. Yeah, it was literally all on logos. FaceTime too. No, yeah. no, it, was, it came to my door. Remember? Oh, oh was well, that was that was just past so. Past. How did you meet? Oh, that's a we great question. We met in calculus too. In calculus oh, too. Oh, calculus. calculus. Yes. Yeah, it was the it was our freshman year fall semester, and it was yeah. funny is that we actually reconnected over. We hadn't really spoken that much. Yeah. Um, but we reconnected over the summer, I guess when the pot, when the pandemic had started. Oh. Yeah. Um, it was really nice to get you know. I mean, now we have this brainchild. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I do again want to give a big shout out to our interns and to Shruta. Um, they have really been such a big part of this process mm -hmm. and I'll do credit to them. Did you want to choose another uh, So um, let's see, do we, can I scroll back? Can we scroll back up? Thank Finding you your niche, on. that's a good, um, yeah. Okay, this is a good question. question. Oh, I'll just read the question for everyone. Yeah. You touched on this, but can you talk more about finding your niche? What has been the reaction to podcasting? Have you found more podcasts, blogs, et cetera, in the same vein? So I think Jameson kind of answered that second question. Mm -hmm. uh, but as to the reaction to us podcasting, um, I'm very loud in all my classes. I'm sure Melanie can kind of speak to that as well. Um, even in an online setting, uh, there's actually even on the train the other day, uh, I was, it was 7 a.m. and I had gotten off at, you know, Stony Brook and somebody tapped my shoulder and they're like, are you Zarya? And I, was like, I was like, yes, I am. And what did I do? <laughs> um, and um, it's, I mean, people I, I think are very, they've heard about the podcast and I'm, it's actually very interesting to see that people have like connected the audio to me, which is really mm -hmm. cool because um, it means that they've like looked at our website, which is queerdiagnosis.com. Mm -hmm. um, our web developer is doing a really great job with updating that. But as for, um, it's been really great actually. I remember I was getting COVID tested and you know, my name popped up with the ID and somebody was like, you're in charge of that podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. Well, I was like, yes, we as a group are in charge of the podcast. Um, and everyone was like, you know, we kind of wish we did that for medical school. And it was funny because I, I actually don't, I wasn't thinking that I would mention this in my medical school applications. Oh, which are coming up. you should. Yes. Wow. Yes. 
Well, we'll yeah. talk more about that. We'll talk, talk more about that. Yeah, but everyone was like, they thought I was doing it for medical school applications when that wasn't even oh, something that right? how sad. No, in a good way, more in like a, oh, okay. oh we wish we okay. thought of that. That's so smart. And I was oh, like, okay. this was not a tactic for medical school. Yeah, that, that was what I was Yeah, saying. yeah. I um, yeah. But definitely, I mean, I, I it's amazing. How, like, even in the humanities building, I took a seat. Somebody was like, I love your podcast and I appreciate what you're doing. I, I haven't heard anything negative. Ooh, um, you can rate us five stars on um, okay. Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you want to check us out. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so one thing we're going to want to do is make sure we post ways to get to both of you so we can drive up uh, the traffic to both these, uh, these Stony Brook generated projects. Yes. Um, so someone's asking asking about what you're going to do next. Do you see the podcast? So uh, you're getting a lot of praise for how terrific this is. And, uh, amen to that. But uh, what what's on the docket for next? I, I have um, Well, that we're working on season two yeah. right now. Yes, we have, tell us about yes. season, We have three recorded episodes. Oh, um, like I said, my computer broke itself for no reason. We, we have the episodes. Um, we just, I just need to re-edit them. Mm. And so as soon as we get that done, we're going to start putting those up bi-weekly, right? Bi-weekly. Yep. Okay. And Starting October 6th. And mm. those, it, those interviews are very good so far. Yeah. They've been, they've been really nice. And we have better mics because we did the merch <laughs> sale this summer. We have mm. higher quality editing because I've improved. And... Zaria and Shuta have definitely gotten better as hosts. Not that you were bad. No, but we've been better. But we got better. You've gotten yeah. better. Yes. Yeah. And one thing I want to add is actually, um, I'm currently looking for donors for to create a scholarship. Um, because I think mm. at this point, I mean, I used to work three jobs in high school, and Jameson also is working. And so with Shuta, we're working college students, but honestly, I feel like we're in a position of privilege now to give back to the community. Mm. And so I really want to start a scholarship for um, either high school seniors, including uh, undergraduate students mm -hmm. from disadvantaged backgrounds mm -hmm. who identify as queer because mm -hmm. I didn't have that same community mm -hmm. growing up. And if I had seen somebody create a scholarship, mm -hmm. you know, it would have helped a long way. Mm -hmm. So actually I have a meeting on Friday, fingers crossed, to see if I could set up that scholarship. Um, that is another thing. Networking is such a big thing. Um, I got connected with the head of a school and I did that because of I was able to have that connection because of my medical scribing and mm -hmm. a doctor connected me to his mentor and so on and so forth. Um, another thing that I would like to do is start a, um, a plus size inclusive clothing mm -hmm. closet. Awesome. Um, awesome. I'm not really sure again how I'm going to do that mm -hmm. because um, my closet is huge, <laughs> um, but I don't know exactly you know where to start that. I would love to start in Stony Brook, mm -hmm. um, but it's all about figuring out who do I contact, where, where do I got to reach So there is that, there is a, a wardrobe for, um, through the graduate school for graduate oh. students doing job interviews. So we idea. might talk to the person who set that up. She might be able to help you figure out how we could do that for undergraduates. That would be great. Yeah, okay, thank good. You. See, this is, okay. this is how networks are, yes. are broadened and deepened. Yeah. I think we have some time. Yes, and I'm, I'm having, um, specific themes in upcoming podcasts. Yeah, so um, one of our most recent episodes talked about HIV AIDS and growing up in that era of um, being a gay Asian American yeah. and, um, mm -hmm. you know, anti-Asian rhetoric has been such a huge yes. thing. Not yeah. only during COVID, I think it's kind of been heightened yes, due to COVID. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's definitely always been there, but those are definitely some things that we're gonna be mm -hmm. talking about um, in up upcoming episodes, mm -hmm. yeah. I would love to address more uh, themes of accessibility as we go yeah. forward too, because yeah. we, upload, we also upload transcripts of all of our podcasts mm -hmm. for those who are hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. And we would like to just make it as accessible as possible. So if we can also get some more decisions on there that represent that side of the mm -hmm. community, I think that would also be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Excellent, yep. Um, Karen, your question about how do you find your guests? Um, again, I have a loud mouth. I can talk. <laughs> um, honestly, sometimes I was sitting at the train station um, <laughs> at 4 a.m. Uh, and, and I was talking to, I was all alone at this train station and I, it feels like a fever dream, but it was just me and one other woman at this train station 
and she was a grandmother and you know I was I was scared I talked to her and she was like oh like we had been talking for two hours because my train just was not coming um and she was like oh you know my son's a doctor I was like oh really oh. and I was like can you tell me more about your son and then that's actually how we ended up finding uh, one of our most like one of our um, uh, guests from season one and even with season two um a lot of it's med medical Twitter. So med Twitter is um, basically you have a Twitter account and then you just follow a lot of, um, like you can follow the medical tags. Um, and then from there, I kind of, I'd like to introduce myself when somebody follows me and say, hi, um, this is not an automated message. I just wanted to say thank you for supporting us and what, and your support means a lot to us. Um, and a lot of times people have actually been reaching out to us like, hey, we're interested in being interviewed, um, which I think is a huge privilege and also such a great testament to how much work we've done and that is being recognized. So Jacqueline, did you get your question asked? I see uh, we're, we're trying to scroll through the chat. Do you see what you oh, uh, I got the shameless plug. <laughs> that that the um, the uh, WAGs will be doing uh, highlighting the podcast in the fall yeah. newsletter letter, but it looks like she said we, uh, we oh we got it okay yeah. good thank yeah. you thank you okay it's uh, we have four minutes left anybody want to ask a brilliant wrap up question uh, well this is um, who should we be going after at uh, Stony Brook to make more resources available for this kind of work. Uh, I mean, you guys have done a great job of finding what's yeah, available. Really that side of it. <laughs> yeah. Ours is mostly outside. Yeah. So. Well, it was, it was resources that you could find in student affairs. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'll hit up Rick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've been listening. <laughs> um, yes, come back say, over here. Yes, sorry. I would say definitely student affairs, Rick Cato. Oh, okay. We saw Rick Cato during our photo shoot this morning. Yes, we yeah. did. Oh, yeah. Well, he, um, he is very, he knows me very well, so he <laughs> mentioned <laughs> him. Yes. Yeah, mentioned me <laughs> to him. Yeah. Um, also, Rick McClendon mm -hmm. is also an excellent resource. Uh, Judy Brown Clark, okay. really everybody that I interviewed. <laughs> Um, yes, I think we're going to. If you go on YouTube channel, yeah. be a subscriber and look and see right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, who I've interviewed. I think Andrew has asked a good wrap up question in terms of, or no, uh, Adrian, what are our future plans personally? So, who wants to go first? I can go first. Um, initially, I wanted to be a cardiothoracic surgeon, mm -hmm. although, in more recently, I think it's all, I'm going to be honest with you, um, the women's gender search. Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies Department. I only became a major last semester, but I feel like my whole life has, the trajectory has just changed because I'm like, maybe I should go into ob guy and maybe I should, you know, study abroad and look at postpartum depression and pregnant women in different, um, in different neighborhoods. Um, and now I'm kind of like, do I want to become a plastic surgeon and do um, gender affirming surgery? Yeah. There's so much, I think, I mean, it's, honestly, I, I just want to say thank you to the Women's Gender and studies, uh, women's gender and sexuality <laughs> studies department. Um, because I don't think I've ever, I, I knew that our school was very supportive of student endeavors, but I've never mm -hmm. seen a department work so hard yes. to support its students. And generally, like, I, I do appreciate all that they do. Mm -hmm. And everyone here as well, I appreciate your support as well. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I really don't know what I want to do. I have a lot of- <laughs> When you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, my feet in a lot of different um, puddles, so to speak. But I don't know, I love radio. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and as the news director, I'm loving my job there, but I also love TV. I do love copy editing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a journalist, even though I'm a journalism major. I want to do something kind of different, but also help mm -hmm. the community. We will see what doors will open, but I'm sure the doors will open. So um, I'm actually in the Stonebridge master pro master's program right now for education, so I'm going to go and become a physics and mathematics teacher, oh, probably. And so, yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe, it's not really super related, but... Yeah. Maybe if I'd had you 
as my teacher, I wouldn't be so adverse, math adverse. So well, I'm glad you're uh, James and physics was, too. Yeah, James was my calculus tutor when I was taking the course. Oh, so, no, we took the course together. We okay, all studied. that's what he says. He loved, <laughs> he did everything for that class. Um, I don't think I would have passed without his help. Calculus killed me, but anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> but like you said, we, we or like about what you saying with plastic surgery, we also have a great episode. Coming up in season two. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, very well, good. Yeah. So Excellent. definitely feel free. And like, thank you again for like even Melanie. Melanie has been such a huge inspiration. Um, even in like, in, even in Spanish class, like I was like, this is somebody who's going for a piece. And it's nice to see oh, you here too. Someday, yeah, nice. someday, yeah, someday nice. we'll say yeah. we knew them. Yeah. We knew them when they were. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This has been really a, uh, uplifting of the spirit and um, stay tuned.